Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to discuss Archimedes' principle on buoyancy for partially submerged body and for wholly submerged body. I hope that you uh, patiently watch and listen to the discussion. So, we have here Archimedes' principle on buoyancy. Any body partially or wholly submerged in a fluid is subjected to a buoyant force equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. So that was the uh, statement of Archimedes. And he was able to found out this principle after taking a bath. So case one, partially submerged body. So we have here a floating body that is in equilibrium. So it is subjected to the following. So that's the center of gravity of the body where the weight acts. And this is the center of buoyancy where it is defined as the centroid of the submerged portion of the body. Submerged volume. So the weight acts through the center of gravity and the uh, buoyant force acts through the center of buoyancy, BO. So, because this is in equilibrium, then weight is equal to buoyant force. Now, we will use the principle on curved surfaces to verify this buoyant force. So, call this volume displaced where V sub D is volume displaced or volume above the curved portion of the body to the liquid surface. Remember the principle on curved surfaces. And buoyant force is equal to specific weight of fluid times the volume displaced from principle on curved surfaces. First, I do not define it as uh, gamma times volume displaced already. So remember from principle on curved surfaces, the upward force on the curved surface for when the liquid is under the curved surface is equal to the weight of the fluid that is bounded by the curve to the liquid surface, up to the liquid surface. So this is the volume displaced. That's why FV or buoyant force is gamma times volume displaced. Case 2 for sub wholly submerged body, and we will use the principle on curved surfaces first. We will divide the surface or the body into two parts because the lower portion ABC, ACB, is under the or the liquid is under that curve and for the upper part ADB the liquid is above it so for ACB portion so remember the principle that there is an upward force FV which is equal to the weight of liquid real or imaginary bounded by the curve ABC up to the liquid surface. So this entire volume here is FV1. And the volume to be considered is that shaded portion, this entire shaded portion. Remember the principle. Then since the upper part ADB is another case where the liquid is above it, then FV2 is equal to the weight of liquid above the curve ADB surrounding it up to the liquid surface. So FV1 is gamma times volume of portion above ACB up to the liquid surface. So this entire shaded volume. So specific weight times that entire shaded volume. While FV2, which is downward, is equal to the volume of liquid surrounding this upper part 
of the curve ADB. And that is represented by that uh, yellow shaded portion, including the portion here. So that's FD2. Therefore, the net force, because FD1 is greater than FD2, is upward. And that is equal to gamma times the net volume. And that net volume is the volume of this entire body, which is colored green. So FD2 is gamma times volume above curve ADB up to the liquid surface. Then finally, the net upward force, which we will call FV net, that one is equal to buoyant force and it is equal to gamma times the volume of the body. So that's now defines buoyant force for fully submerged body. And this one for partially submerged body, gamma times volume displaced. But when the body is totally submerged, then it is equal to specific weight times the volume of the body. So vis a -vis is volume of the body that is surrounded by the fluid. Now for wholly submerged body, the volume displaced is equal to volume of the body. The center of gravity and center of buoyancy coincide for fully submerged body when the body is homogeneous only, of course. And gamma is the unit weight of the fluid or specific weight of the fluid. For prismatic bodies, we will use principle on hydrostatic pressure here to prove that the buoyant force is the same as for partially or for floating body, gamma times uh, volume displaced, as well as for totally submerged body, gamma times volume of the body. So case one, partially submerged body. So here we have bottom area. Uh, we are not concerned of the horizontal forces because the horizontal forces are balanced. So this body floats upright, it remains upright. We are just concerned of the force acting upward on this bottom portion. And we will define it as the hydrostatic force, which is gamma bar the its area for that body. So the depth of submergence or the drop is denoted by D and H, the area of the bottom or any cross-sectional area horizontally is constant. That's why it's prismatic. So FV is buoyant force and that is equal to the hydrostatic force on the bottom part. And that should be equal to the weight because that is in equilibrium. So FV or the force acting on the bottom, which is upward. Gamma, specific weight, barred H. Barred H is the draft because the distance of the centroid of the bottom to the liquid surface is D and the area of the bottom is A. And take note that the product of draft and area or area and draft is the volume under the liquid surface. So that's the volume displaced. So buoyant force also is gamma bar H area, gamma where bar H is the draft D and area is the cross sectional area of the bottom. So I use here uh, principle on hydrostatic pressure. So the result is the same gamma times volume displaced for partially submerged body where weight is equal to buoyant force for this floating body and it is equal to gamma times volume displaced. So since weight is specific gravity of the body times specific weight of water times volume of the body and Specific weight of fluid is specific gravity of the fluid times specific weight of water times volume displaced. We can cancel out specific weight of water. So the specific or the volume displaced is equal to specific gravity of the body, volume of the body divided by specific gravity of the fluid. So that's uh, also volume displaced. So volume displaced, specific gravity of the body over specific 
gravity of the fluid times volume of the entire body. So, for this to be, volume displaced to be less than volume of the body or floating body, the specific gravity of the body should be less than that of the specific gravity of the fluid. So, the above formula is applicable to all shape bodies because this is general, whether prismatic or non-prismatic. For prismatic body, we simply replace volume displaced by area times draft and volume of the body is area times total height. So that's why for prismatic bodies, volume displaced is area times draft, then volume of the body area times height. So the draft therefore is ratio of specific gravity of body to that of fluid times the overall height of the body. So that's the expression for the draft or depth of submergence. So we define D as draft or depth of submergence. So the formula above is applicable for prismatic bodies. For wholly submerged body, this is the situation. I use principle on hydrostatic pressure here. So we have two areas, bottom and above. The bottom area is at a distance of H1 from the liquid surface. And the top area, the centroid of the top area is at, the, at a distance H2 from the liquid surface. So FD1 is equal to, if you use principle on curved surfaces, FD1 is equal to specific weight times volume of liquid above the bottom. The volume of liquid above the bottom is area of the bottom times H1. So FD1 is specific weight H1 area. This is defined as the hydrostatic force on the bottom. The first one is from principle on curved surfaces, but the curve is flat here. Specific weight times volume above the bottom or above the flat bottom. And this definition is from hydrostatic pressure principle, specific weight, barred H area, where barred H is H1 because the centroid of the bottom area is at distant H1 from the free liquid surface. So they are the same. Then for FV2, which is downward, normal to the top area, if we define that by principle on curved surfaces, but the curve is flat here, it is equal to specific weight of this liquid air or fluid times volume above the top, which is area times H2. Now, if we define FD2 as a hydrostatic force perpendicular to the top, then it is equal to specific weight gamma distance of centroid of the top area to the liquid surface H2 times area, which is just the same. So, therefore, the net force is upward because FD1 has is greater than FV2 because of the volume and that FD net is the buoyant force. So buoyant force which is FD net is F1 minus F2 factor out gamma and area then we have gamma area times H1 minus H2 where H1 minus H2 is the height of the body for wholly submerged object and therefore it is specific weight times volume of the object or volume of the body, so which is the same as before. So buoyant force is specific weight times volume of the body for totally submerged body. So this is for all bodies that are wholly submerged. Then lastly, if we have an object that has specific gravity greater than that of the uh, liquid where it is suspended fully submerged, then how do we know its weight? It should be attached to a cord, weightless cord, then that weightless cord must be attached also to a very accurate spring scale or any weighing scale. So that's the weight, that's the buoyant force for totally submerged object, 
this is the tension in the string where the body is attached to and that should be so that we will know the tension it should be attached to our weighing balance or spring scale and the tension which is equal to weight minus buoyant force is called the suspended weight of the object or an object in a liquid that is totally submerged of course t is also called the apparent weight of a suspended object in a liquid so to demonstrate an object with a specific weight of 8,000 newtons per cubic meter is attached to a string that is hooked in a very accurate spring scale. So determine the suspended weight of the object when placed in water. So take note the object has specific weight of 8,000 newtons per cubic meter specific weight of water is greater than that of 8,000. Therefore, when this object is placed in water, it will just float and therefore there will be no tension. So the tension is zero. So that's it. That's the principle and you must watch this video first before proceeding to the corresponding examples.